Here on the altar is our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity. He is here. We gather before him in adoration. And here beside him is the beautiful image of his Holy Mother. Our Lady points the way to her Divine Son at all times, and especially today. She shows us the way. It is humbling to preach on an occasion like this. I know you are good and holy people with a deep faith. May your focus now be on Christ himself and not on my words. Let me not distract you from your adoration. And may our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ watch over me and help me to find the right words to show love and honour to his Holy Mother Mary. Together let us go to Jesus through Mary. This centenary year of the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima is an auspicious year, and we meet today in the month of Our Lady, in the Mother Church of our diocese, a diocese whose patron is the Immaculate Conception, and on a first Saturday. Now, in addition to this holy month of Our Lady, there are many beautiful feasts of Our Lady throughout the year, and today is no exception. This day, we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Miracles. Some of you will know the story, which dates back to 1483. A man who had lost money at cards became angry and intoxicated. He struck out with a knife as an image of Our Lady and stabbed it. The image then poured forth blood in torrents. The miraculous image, honored ever since, is venerated this day in the beautiful church of Santa Maria della Pace in Rome, the Church of Our Lady of Peace. And in two days' time, again, as you know, we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Pompeii, that famous shrine of the Most Holy Rosary. And it's also worth mentioning that on Monday the 8th, the Roman Missal contains three optional feasts of Our Lady, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Our Lady Queen of All Saints and Mother of Fair Love, and finally, Our Lady, Mediatrix of All Graces. This latter feast had been celebrated on the 31st of May, but was moved to the 8th of May in 1956. So we are showered with graces from all these beautiful feasts. And we are reminded that Our Lady is the key to our salvation. She overturns the sinful pride and disobedience of Eve. In her humble acceptance of the archangel's message, she opens the way to salvation for us all. She gives us the Redeemer. With Monday's Feast of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, we can reflect on the close physical proximity of her Immaculate Heart and his Sacred Heart during Christ's nine months in the womb. Cardinal de Berulle said, it was not to Rome triumphant that the angel of God was sent, nor to Athens, famous for its learning, nor to Babylon, proud in its achievements, not even to Jerusalem, the center of religious worship to the one true God. His mission was to a small, despised village, hidden away in the hills of Galilee, there in Nazareth, stands a little home which guards the treasure of heaven and earth, a virgin most glorious still than the stars of the skies and the splendors of the earth, and chosen by God to contain immensity itself. God thinks of her, she thinks of him, and to her God sends his messenger. Our Saviour is God and man, and every part of his humanity comes from Mary. We derive from two human parents. Christ Jesus received his humanity from one. Mary gave him flesh. Mary gave him to us. And he, in turn on the cross, entrusted us to her. Saint Augustine said, God created us without us, but he will not save us without us. And we can apply this to Our Lady too. God created us without Mary, but he will not save us without Mary. St. Bernard said, God came to us through Mary. Through Mary, we must return to him. And on the same theme, Bosway said, Mary gives us Christ. Let us see to it that in giving ourselves to her, we give her back 
another Christ. Let us make live again in our souls the Son whom she sacrificed out of love for us. Let us be chaste and pure, for then Mary will recognize her Son in us. Let us be humble and obedient, even as Jesus was obedient unto death. Let our hearts be full of love for and our hands open to the poor and the suffering. Let us forgive and forget, even as Christ forgave, atoning with his blood for the sins of his own executions. What joy for Mary to see her son live once more in us, in our souls by charity, in our bodies by chastity, in our very eyes and feature, by Christian reserve and modesty and simplicity. Then recognizing in us her son by our exact fulfillment of his gospel, she will be deeply moved at this image of her beloved, and she will love her son in us and shower upon us all the sweetness of her motherly affection. St. Bernard's love for Our Lady is richly present in his homilies and, and writings. And in one passage he writes, Through thee we draw nigh to thy Son, O blessed channel of grace, O mother of life, O mother of salvation, in order that we may be received by him who has given us through thee. O thou, our mediatrix, our advocate, reconcile us with thy Son, present us to thy Son, restore us, to thy son. Now St. Bernard wasn't coming out with any new theology here, he was drawing on ancient teachings. For instance, St. Germanus of Constantinople, who'd been born back in 634, and his feast is just coming up on the 12th of May. St. Germanus said this of Mary, no one receives favors from God except through thee, O purest of the pure. So this image of graces being channeled through Mary has been described and shared by many theologians and prayers down the ages. And the popes in more recent times too have echoed this same thought. Leo XIII said, we may affirm that nothing by the will of God is given to us without Mary's mediation, in such way that just as no one can approach the Almighty Father but through his Son, likewise, no one, so to speak, can approach Christ but through his Mother. And when the statue of Our Lady of Fatima was crowned on the 13th of May, 1946, the venerable Pope Pius XII said, the Son of God gave his heavenly mother a share in his glory, his majesty, his kingship. Because associated as mother and minister to the King of Martyrs in the ineffable work of man's redemption, she is likewise associated with him forever, with power, so to speak, infinite, in the distribution of the graces which flow from the redemption. And St. John Paul II often spoke of this role of Our Lady, saying that Mary is the mediatrix of all graces because she is the mother of the very author of grace, Jesus Christ. And you may recall on the final day of his papacy, Pope Benedict XVI entrusted all the sick of the world to the powerful intercession of Mary, mediatrix of all graces. So this understanding of Our Lady's role dates back to ancient times and continues to be unfolded and to enrich us in our own day. The wedding guests at Cana turned to Mary for help. Let us never tire of turning to her. The introit for the Mass of Our Lady Mediatrix of all graces is drawn from the letter to the Hebrews. Let us go with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in seasonable aid. St. John, the beloved disciple, received Mary at the foot of the cross and took her not only into his home, but into his life and into his heart. She had received Jesus Christ in her very womb at the Annunciation. Henceforth, she would receive Jesus Christ in Holy Communion at the Masses offered by St. John. She gave Jesus to St. John as to all of us, and in humility she receives Jesus. Like St. John, let us take Mary into our homes and hearts. I'm sure you've seen many pictures of Our Lady kneeling before St. John's altar to receive Holy Communion. It used to be a classic image to give to First Communion children. 
So yet again, Our Lady is a model disciple for us in this as in all ways. We might in particular reflect on the manner in which she received Jesus Christ in Holy Communion. Her love, her faith, her devotion, her humility. We could also call to mind the reunion of the Holy Family after our Lord had been left behind in the temple. Jesus returned with Mary and Joseph and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. In that short phrase from St. Luke's Gospel, we are given so much to ponder. The Saviour of the world, the King of Kings, is subject to Mary, is obedient to her. No wonder she pondered this in her immaculate heart. The Lord Jesus Christ listened to his mother. He wants us to listen to her too. Our Lord loves his mother. How can we not love her too? St. Louis de Montfort said, he who does not have Mary as his mother does not have God as his father. We have nothing to fear. We have not been abandoned. We have not been left alone. Our Lord has given us the precious gift of his mother. Sweet Jesus, here on this altar, help us to show our love for you by loving your mother. Help us to apply these words of St. Bernard, if the winds of temptation arise, if you are driving upon the rocks of tribulation, look to the star, invoke Mary. If you are tossed upon the waves of pride, of ambition, of envy, of rivalry, look to the star, invoke Mary. If wrath, avarice, temptations of the flesh assail the frail skiff of your mind, look to Mary. If troubled by the greatness of your crimes, confused by the foulness of your conscience, and desperate with the horror of judgment, you feel yourself drawn into the depth of sorrow and into the abyss of despair, invoke and think of Mary. Let not the name depart from heart and from lips, and that you may obtain a part in the petitions of her prayer. Do not desert the example of her life. If you think of and follow her, you will not go wrong, nor despair if you beg of her. With her help, you will not fall or be fatigued. If she is favourable, you will be sure to arrive. And I'll conclude with just a sentence from the supplication to Our Lady of Pompeii, which I know many of you will be reciting on Monday, that beautiful feast. We now ask of thee, O Queen, a last favour, which thou canst not refuse on this solemn day. Grant to all of us thy constant love and in a special manner, thy maternal blessing. Bless finally all those who practice and spread devotion to thy most holy rosary. O blessed rosary of Mary, sweet chain which unites us to God, bond of love which connects us with the angels, tower of safety against the assaults of hell, sure harbour in the universal shipwreck. Nevermore shall we part with thee, Thou shalt be our comfort in the hour of agony. To thee the last kiss of our life and the last word of our dying lips shall be thy sweet name, O Queen of the Rosary, Mother dear, only refuge of sinners, supreme comforter of the afflicted, blessed be thy name, now and forever. Amen.